Welcome back everyone to my Let's Play of Dragon Warrior 3 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Last episode, um, we freed Japan from the terror of the Orochi. And we ended up getting the purple orb um, and the, the Orochi sword. Uh, it's a pretty interesting tale uh, about the Orochi sword if you uh, look up the history of it. Uh, there's a kind of myth about it in uh, Japan. Uh, there was a basically a similar to what was happening here. Uh, there was a maiden who was going to be sacrificed to this multi-headed snake, and the uh, the the fiance of the the woman decided uh, like he was going to defeat the snake. So he put out this uh, this food that like all serpents like, and the snake came to uh, the multi-headed snake came to eat it all, and basically like uh, got drunk on the on the food and and uh, like the wine that was put out. And uh, the man ended up uh, slaying the Orochi, the dragon, and inside its tail, uh, he found the Orochi sword. So, yeah, it's pretty interesting how they uh, these games take a lot of uh, things out of mythology from all around the world. Uh, helps you learn about uh, history in like a, a fun way. So, but now speaking of history, uh, a while ago we were told in the village Sioux that there was. Uh, uh, a instrument, a flute that could help uh, help us find out where the orbs are. So, what? Uh, it's basically like the the flute in uh, the flute in uh, Dragon Quest Two. Uh, you played it and it let you know if there was a crest nearby. Uh, same thing here. So, uh, we were told that it, uh, it was uh, somewhere uh, on the west. So here we are. We're uh, over here on the western coast, basically in California. Uh, which I guess uh, ties into uh, real history because in the 19th century uh, a lot of people went over to California, the California Gold Rush, to find treasure. So it would make sense that there's a item over here that's going to help us find treasure. So, this echoing flute. Uh, we won't be using it at all because like I said, this playthrough, it'll be showing where all the orbs are so it's not necessary. But, like I said, I want to do 100% of the game, get everything. And there's a few new enemies that we want to encounter here. So. Uh, the first one there being that lethal armor. It can be really, really uh, lethal, no pun intended, uh, because they can cast a defense spell, they hit really hard, and they uh, uh, and they have really high defense, so it's hard to uh, deal damage to them. Uh, they're not very susceptible to the defense spell either, so uh, we even just, we just got that Roji sword that can uh, cast the defense spell for free, but even casting it for free, it doesn't work all that often. The best bet is uh, if you have like the Snow Blast spell. Tennyson luckily has that spell. Uh, Fire-based spells don't seem to work at all on them. So they tend to just uh, avoid those spells. So if you have a Snow Blast spell or Ice Spear is one of the greater uh, ice spells, they tend to do real good damage on them. So, so this is a really short tower. Uh, we're going to have a little gimmick here to get all the treasure. Uh, that's going to uh, be important later on in the game. Uh, the mechanic of jumping off of uh, ropes. We did that before in the uh, Tower of Garuna where we got the Book of Satori. We're going to have to redo it again here. So the game's giving us uh, two chances to practice jumping off ropes to fall into uh, another uh, area because we're going to have to do that uh, later on in the game. There's a tower and you have to get a, an item to defeat the game. It's necessary. So There's another new enemy, the... Uh, uh, executioner there, they uh, can cast stop spell, uh, and they, like the other uh, guys who uh, who share that palette, they have a chance to uh, hit you with a brutal attack, which ignores all your defense. We still got these man eater chests. We got two of them here. Uh, I figured I'd keep them all in here. I forgot to heal up. Uh, I just yeah, I should have uh, healed up. Yeah, you never want to fight these guys like how I am here. Uh, because if that would have told Prince Oni, he probably could have finished him off. Uh, these guys have extremely high attack, so... There's going to be another man-eater chest on the other side of the tower uh, that we're going to get uh, after we cross over a bunch of uh, uh, ropes. So we're going make, to make sure that we are, are healed up for that. Heal ourselves up here. So it's a good thing we have all these uh, healers now all of a sudden. 
we wouldn't be able to make it like how we did with the first part of the game where we didn't really have a healer, we only had Prince Oni helping out with his heals. Now this uh, heal more spell is really invaluable that uh, both uh, Sadie uh, and Indy have. Prince Oni will eventually get a 2, uh, and uh, eventually uh, Sadie and Indy will get uh, the heal all spell, which heals you to max hit points. So here's that other uh, man eater chest. We'll finish it off, and then we're going to head up to the north. We want to head up to the basically the middle of the uh, of the room, and then we drop down from there. Now, when we first uh, came down, we're gonna we're eventually uh, when we're leaving the tower, we'll eventually see uh, the bottom floor. There was those four uh, staircases. The upper left one is the only one you want to go up because the, all the other three just lead to dead ends. Ooh, a whole bunch of sky dragons there. Now we just get to the middle here, we fall down, and we end up in seeing these uh, four treasure chests here. All those uh, other three uh, uh, staircases that I mentioned, they all just take you to those uh, upper uh, corners you see in the, uh, in the upper right and lower left and lower right. That one uh, just takes you to those uh, locations. I guess it's just there to give you a, uh, you know, an idea of, you know, that, hey, there's something in the middle to give you a hint to drop down those, uh, from the, uh, ropes up above. So that's pretty much it in this tower. Uh, the only reason I'm sticking around here just a little bit longer is there's another new enemy that I want to encounter here. And then after we encounter it, then we can make our, uh, way probably back to, uh, Aaliyah Hand to drop off some stuff. So... We have a, uh, another uh, orb lead, basically, back in the uh, shrine in uh, Lancel. There's that, and then there's a whole bunch of those travel doors that we need to uh, still go in and discover. So, we've also had a little bit uh, earlier about, we talked about uh, the village Sioux. They gave us some information. They said there's a wizard who lives in uh, Greenland. Uh, which is basically Greenland, so we'll have to go visit him too, so. A lot of, uh, uh, sailing around on a boat, uh, will be, uh, you know, next episode, so. Won't be making much progress, but basically we'll be pointing out, uh, I'll be visiting some, uh, places, because gathering clues up. So, because it's kind of a, a little bit of a, uh, mystery, one of the upcoming orbs, how we're, uh, I'm gonna get it, but everything ties in uh, once you see all the clues. So I'll be pointing that out as I uh, go around. See, so yeah, I have no luck getting this enemy. Uh, took me quite a few battles to finally get into it, but here it is the Venom Zombie. Uh, like other zombies, it can call for help. Uh, the Venom Zombie, though, has the uniqueness that, like a lot of other Venom enemies, it can poison you, uh, it can breathe a poison breath. It'll hit all your characters, so uh, that could be pretty, pretty deadly. Although uh, with so many characters of ours, Sadie and Indy both have the uh, antidote spell. Uh, poison ain't that much of a problem like it was back in the beginning of the game when you basically had to rely on antidote uh, herbs because we didn't have a, a pilgrim. That was uh, poison was bad because remember any, uh, each step you take, you. Uh, lose, uh, uh, every four steps you take, I mean, you lose a uh, point of health. So, uh, back when, you know, when we uh, had very low hit points, and we didn't have access to the antidote uh, spell right away, uh, getting uh, poisoned in the middle of a dungeon was uh, really uh, traumatic. And we saw that basically when we uh, went through the tower of Najim over there to the left. We uh, ended up getting poisoned, I think it was Prince Oni got poisoned, uh, for the end, and uh, we had to just uh, use the uh, like medical herbs to keep his hit points up, because that was the only uh, way we could keep him from. Because poison in this game, unlike say uh, like Final Fantasy, uh, if you have the poison status in this game, uh, you can actually be defeated brought down to zero hit points. Like another like Final Fantasy, like when you're walking on lava tiles and stuff. Uh, if you're down to one hit point, you're not going to take any more damage, but not in the Dragon Quest games, so... Poison, barrier tiles, uh, they can all, uh, take you down, uh, to zero hit points, and they have to go to the place to revive them. There's also, uh, speaking of revival, 
like a Dragon Quest uh, 2, there is a Leaf of the Wall tree that we can find later on that uh, can revive uh, your characters. Uh, but like Dragon Quest 2, you can only have one of them at a time. So we can we're gonna go place to where there is a where the Leaf of the Wall tree is found uh, in the next episode. When we're going around just like exploring, gathering clues. Because it's going to be kind of near uh, where the leaf is, so we'll be sure to pick one of them up. But like I said, other than that, uh, for now we'd have to just go back to uh, clinic and have them uh, heal uh, anyone who's uh, knocked out, revive them. Of course, it's getting more expensive uh, based on your level. It's a certain amount. The, the higher your level, the uh, more money it costs. So. Eventually, uh, both the Pilgrim and the Sage uh, will learn a Revive spell that 100% uh, guarantees you to bring Vibrata back, bring, bring, bring a character back to life, sorry about that. Uh, Prince Oni will learn a Revive spell as well, but it only has a 50% chance, so uh, I think that's Vivify, and the other one is Revive. Uh, revive the, what the Pilgrim and the uh, Sage learn, uh, like I said, is 100% accuracy. Uh, it's always going to work and bring the person back to life, but uh, it's a coin flip with uh, the one that Prince Oni learns, so... Prince Oni, like I said, he, uh, he's, he does a lot of things, but like he doesn't do everything the best, you know. Uh, the Pilgrim out-heals him, uh, even his damage spells, the Wizard out-damages, uh, the Soldier and Fighter probably out-damage him with uh, just pure physicals. Uh, but, like I said, just he's a good anchor. He, like, he, uh, he does everything uh, well. So, and he has access to certain spells that no one else can get. So, surprisingly, the best healing spell, Heal Us All, which heals everybody to their maximum amount of hit points, but it costs so many MP and uh, unless you're really grinding for uh, seed stats to increase your MP, Prince Oni's not going to be able to cast it a whole lot. So, we'll see that in the bonus episode where we take on the final boss of the game uh, at max level without using uh, the way the game wants you to do it. So you'll get some good use out of that spell. So take care, have a good one, see you next episode. Bye.